Welcome one and all to continuing coverage of the 2021 World Series of Poker. Event number 82, the whopping $250,000 buy-in, super high roller. Final table is here. Ali Najad alongside Maria Ho and five. Let's call them professional players, but there is one mystery man, not of course our chip leader, Adrian Mateos, who is in search of his fourth World Series of Poker bracelet, the overwhelming chip leader coming into the event. Spaniard looking to add to his already impressive $22 million in career tournament earnings. And obviously he is poised to do that with the lion's share of the prize pool, sitting on over 25 million in chips, but for over half of all the chips in play, followed by Keith Tilston, Ben Heath, Seth Davies, and the short stack of Johnny Kincaid, the man I was referencing when I mentioned perhaps they aren't all professionals. Kincaid, a bit of a mystery to us. We'll get to it. As you look at the payout, $632,000 already secured by all five of these players. There's only five places that paid out after 33 entries. Payouts brought to you by Cuervo. There are no strangers. And there are still bracelets to be awarded here at this year's World Series. The blinds will start at 125,000 and 250K with a 250K big blind ante. And Maria, we love to preside over these super high roller events because it is a different type of poker we bear witness to. Yeah, we've already seen Mateus at a final table this WSOP. He ended up coming up short, but his play was so amazing to watch. I wasn't surprised, but it's always nice to see players of this caliber deliver as expected. Keith Tilston, who I believe it was oh. me who affectionately christened him Knuckles due to that sort of bare knuckle brawler, not only vibe on the poker table, but kind of affect that he has, decides to limp. Coming in second in chips. Seth Davies says, let's go. 864 all diamonds, Check. a pair and a flush draw for Tilston in position against the dummy end of a gut shot. Should be an easy release, and the first pot of the night goes to Keith Tilston. 6.4 million in career tournament earnings for the 39-year-old who lives out in Austin, like Texas. Today. An equity and trader yeah, at Great tomorrow, Point like, Capital. Remarkably bad scheduling. Yeah. Like tomorrow, there's just going to be the choice of like regging day two of the 50 or yeah, yeah, 100. 100. Like, how does that exist? Get a look at the chip yeah. denominations. Yeah, really Quarters really through million chips crazy. out there. Keith, an international man, spent ages five through 10 living in Colombia, where his parents worked at the oh time, well. is a cash game pro, and was a regular on the poker circuit from 05 through 2010 before he stepped away. Raises 500,000. Mateos. Picking a bad time to have King X as Ben Heath in the big blind has King Queen, but of course sitting third in chips with two shorter stacks out there against the big stack of Mateos. The tread may be light. Oh. And indeed, Ben chooses to flat, understandably, Maria. Uh -huh. 1.375 in the middle to the flop we go. And it is Jack 9-6, two overs in the gut shot, straight draw. Checks over to Mateos. There's definitely an expectation from the other players that Mateos will be opening light. But as you had mentioned, you know, a lot of these bigger hands will be underrepresented because of the ICM constraints. He faces a follow through of 350K. Does have the King of Hearts working. Ten seconds. 
big college football games though? Yeah. Um, you may say have heard the dealer seven, say 10 seconds there. Ball. And as Ben Heath checked jams, we expect a quick and easy release from Mateos, which follows suit. And you get a glance at the first time a shot clock has been in play all series long at an event that you and I have covered. Alabama's yeah, I noticed right these new shot so clock so chips that Alabama are in use, and I don't know if they it's, you know, there's been quarter. so much talk throughout this whole series yeah, about how much quarter, time players take, yeah. and you, obviously you, in a high roller environment, YouTube I think most players feel comfortable with the shot clock. To record every college football game. You got to look there at Ben Heath's bio board, brought to you by the Global Poker Index and the Hendon Mob. The 29-year-old lives in Brighton. $500,000. Has career tournament earnings in excess of $8.6 million and a bracelet from back in 2019 in the 50K high roller. Said he only slept two and a half hours the night before his win. You wonder whether or not he may have stayed up late looking to repeat the path. Ten seconds. All in. Davies all in. takes his turn with a king queen moving all in as an open from the button. It's over four, right? It's like right at four. Yeah. It's okay. It's Again, Mateos dominated after opening. And we'll let it go. <laughs> Davies yeah, hauls Texas one in, and he was reined nice. in prior to play by our very own Brutal Jeff Platt. They lost again today. Well, Seth, so many deep runs for you in 2021. Where's your confidence level at right now? Uh, really high. I mean... Throughout the last two years, I've been playing a ton of poker, both online and live. So get really sharp over that, you know, putting in that type of volume over that stretch of time. So I feel really good about what I'm doing, and yeah, hopefully it pans out today. Adrian Mateos, the overwhelming chip leader here. What do you see in his game that makes him so tough to deal with? He's been playing really well uh, the last few days. Uh, he's a high pressure guy. Like he won't, he won't let you breathe, uh, which is which is great, especially as a chip leader. Like. If like he's gonna put heat on you, so you kind of have to uh, be willing to play some big pots against a guy like that. So yeah, he's really tough. He's not really the guy you want to see with a chip lead, but uh, you know we'll do what we have to do against it. Appreciate the time as always. Good luck All right, today. Buddy. All right, you man. El Matador. Check. Check. Sometimes the term used to describe Mateos. I, I felt like back in the day, previous main event winner Carlos Mortensen was the Matador, the original Spaniard. Check. But uh, obviously, the way Davies describes Mateos, he could be earning that title unto himself, especially with Mortensen not really being around these days. That's Meanwhile, first action out of Johnny Kincaid. He limped the small blind against Mateos, who has flopped a pair of fours up against top pair. Kincaid slipped it to him. And Mateos asking the question with a min bet of 250K. And if we're Kincaid on the short right. stack here, yeah, it did feel like that would right. be the, the path to take, didn't it? Yeah, I think if it wasn't just an open jam outright, then this limp shove also makes sense for his stack size. Definitely has fold equity. Again, Mateo's going to put a lot of pressure, as we heard Davies mention. And so... Ten seconds. Not a nice start for Mateos, who's now gone 0 for 3. Conversely for Kincaid, just what the doctor ordered as he is looking to chip up and loosen his collar a little bit. Still under 20 bigs for the 42-year-old who lives here in Vegas. A crypto trader whose last recorded cash was back in February of 2011, according to GPI and the Hendon Mob. The Live Poker Collective. Mm. Two hundred and fifty six thousand in career tournament earnings for Kincaid. Originally from Omaha, Nebraska, and he is already guaranteed to triple his career earnings with this cash, regardless of his finish. Raises six hundred and twenty five thousand. Ben Heath shoots it up to 625,000.
Chaos with ace 10 in the small mulls it over, Maria. Really strong hand from the small blind. We raise it. And 10 million, 125,000. He's going to ask for all of Heath's remaining stack here. And Ben deciding not to make a meal of it will wave goodbye to six and a quarter off the top of his stack. Mateos, just 27 years of age, originally from Madrid, but now lives in London, which is a good place to be a professional poker player. A number of card rooms around there, as well as some very well-to-do folks that like to play some private games and maybe mosey into the casino for some high-stakes PLO or no limit from time to time. Seven suited in the cutoff. Genuine deliberation mm -hmm. here, or just a bit of Hollywood? Six hundred thousand. I think he was deliberating with whether an open is best here, or maybe it's perhaps just, just shoving mm -hmm. is better. I think that those could just be the only two options with this type of hand. Of course, you know, it's too strong to fold, but again, you don't necessarily want to commit yourself pre-flop in case there are a lot of action behind you and you can get away and survive for that pay jump. And here, Tilston thinking about it with the King Jack offsuit. And Keith has to presume that oh. Johnny's willingness to open is going to be off of a pretty narrow range <laughs> at this point, right? Yeah, especially with Mateos to his left, uh, but also, you know, Kincaid, because we know so little about him, these players may not have had much time or experience playing against him either. So I think that would change kind of the perception of what someone's standard That's opening ranges would be. Well, on the topic of having much, we can easily describe Kincaid's holding as having quite a lot. Aces and sevens here. Check to him. Tilston with the gut shot Broadway draw. No spade in his hand. And he's out of there. Keeps it clean. And Kincaid now leaves Davies officially on the short stack. Well, if you're out there and you're watching us right now on YouTube, we need something from you. Mash that like button. And don't forget, you can get unlimited access to more than 4,000 hours of poker content by subscribing to us at PokerGo.com. Be sure to use the promo code 250K, 250K, to save $20 on an annual plan. At this point in the series, Maria, I feel like you can just start typing English words into the promo code field, and <laughs> you're drawn live to get 20 bucks off with a variety of them. There should be like a hidden $50 off sub right. for someone who just m magically Somebody can guess just the right types <laughs> in configuration. Narwhal, and you're like, oh, yeah, Narwhal, that's good for 50 bucks. Queen Jack suited oh. for Davies. Do you know what a Narwhal is? Isn't Maria? it some type of animal? Yes. Sea creature? Yes. With the horn? Oh, the Cheatsy. <laughs> <laughs> Our producer you here saw him holding his hand up to his head. <laughs> I mean, I think I knew. I just wasn't sure. I it's just like needed the, the confirmation. Walrus meets unicorn thing. Right. Right. Check. But that is not the promo code. That's not the secret one, guys. We don't know that. Keep guessing. <laughs> Ten deuce turns into a flush draw and a gut shot straight draw as well for Ben Heath, who's done quite well out of the big after Davies limped in. Checking it over to Heath. Well, 10 high may not be good. There are so many paths to victory if it isn't. You see 
He's with more equity than the queen high. Ten seconds. Decides to check back. And now hits a deuce. Yeah, Heath definitely taking the low variance line to try to realize all of that equity. Check. <laughs> Davies feels resigned to lay back with this queen jack and let it go if Ten seconds. Heath were to so much as rattle his chips. But stranger things have happened, and Ben Heath checking back once more with the pair of deuces. Maria, surprised at all by that? No, I think that after you check back the flop, once you turn some showdown value with that bottom pair, if you bet, there's not really anything you're protecting from necessarily because I don't think that many hands or are going to call unless they have you beat. And so, of course, you still do have that flush as a backup. So just Check. getting to the river here, I think, Check. is fairly important off of these stack sizes. And so checked all the way down. Every one of these soldiers in front of these guys worth oh so much, given the payouts and the pay jumps. Fifth to fourth, almost $300,000. When these realities exist, Maria, though, and you know that everybody is thinking about them as we look at the tournament summary brought to you by Solve for Why. Christoph Vogel saying being among the recent eliminations on the outside of the pay bubble looking in, they can be leveraged in the other way where you know everyone's tense, you know everyone's looking at that 300K. If you're just willing to stick your neck out there a little bit and lean, it can be quite fruitful. And that makes for an incredibly dangerous player at the final table. And we will see that from time to time, but of course, most of these players very experienced in these situations and if they want to follow, you know, a standard theoretical approach to these high pressure ICM situations, then you're not going to see a lot of them getting out of line. But uh, it definitely makes for a much more interesting viewing experience at times. But not sure we're going to get that from this selection of players. Well, I think Mateos is obviously a candidate. Yeah, but Mateos can do that because he has the chip lead. But if we're talking about maybe seeing kind of a middling stack push back against Mateos, I don't think we will see too much of that. Or even push back against a shorter stack, Maria, given that obviously the cluster is fairly tight between Tilston all the way down to Raises Davies, as you see the counts at the top of your screen. Tilston with the ace-queen does open to 600,000. It would bring me so much joy to know down there at Great Point Capital, if he wanders into the kitchenette, the break room, someone just goes, hey, Knuckles. <laughs> How happy that would make me? 10 seconds. Unhappiness would rate to be the experience Going. for Johnny Going. Kincaid, however, with the ace jack suited. He moves all in, and Tilton, <coughs> pardon me, is going to ask for a count here. Yeah, just shy of 20 big blinds here. I think ace-queen is just too strong. But again, you don't really want to sacrifice your chip position when you're Tilston and potentially lose this pot and then become the short stack. One, two, three. No, it's four. One, three. Four. How close is it? I, yeah, <laughs> I think it's close, but it's a call. You know, I think it's just one of those things that you have to take the spot. Your hand is really good. Again, you may not know too much of what Kincaid's shoving range over your open is, and if it's a little non-standard or deviates in some yeah. way from what the appropriate shoving range should be, then I think ace-queen is probably an even better call. To the flop we go. Tilston looking good. And... That fact remains. On the paired flop, though, some opportunities have presented themselves for Kincaid. Over 10 million in this pot. And the ace comes off, so Tilston just needs to fade the jack, which was the case from the onset.
Bell tolls for Johnny. Is a hook there on the river? Oh it my is. goodness. Wow. Stone cold. That is oh, not a fun feeling there for Tilston. Really, really <sighs> nasty river card there. Unless your name's Johnny Kincaid, in which case there is nothing but sweet sense of relief. Where did that come from? And he never got up. It's like he knew. Kind of say final table. All around. Tilston goes from second to fifth out of five without much fanfare. He's been around the felt long enough. Knows what happens. Presumably he's been on the right side of that equation from time to time. Though to be fair, one could describe Ace Queen against Ace Jack as having been on the right side of the equation. But in terms of outcome, all these guys have enjoyed a suck out or two. Meanwhile, slides into second after hauling in that 10 million. Raise it to 5,125,000. And now Mateos wants to polish Tilston off with this Queen 10. Keith weighing it over with Queen 4. Just how wide is Mateos in this spot? 10 seconds. I mean, fairly wide, but for Tilston, I think it's just a little too weak. It looks like he is oh, going well to decide to put it in there. And he's dominated. Are you surprised at all by Keith's willingness to draw a line in the sand with queen four off of 14 bigs? I am. I understand that he's the shortest stack, so he I'm feels like he has the least to lose. And I'm sure, you know, the pageons don't matter that much to him in the sense that, you know, he doesn't play for a living. And, you know, this spot, he's probably just playing to win. But at the same time, I think he could have found a better spot. He's looking for a four. Instead, he hits the queen, right. as does Mateos. Okay. And now some chop opportunities exist for Tilston. King. 0.3% to hit running fours. Jack, three, not a helpful nice. card. He now needs a jack or better on the river to chop it up. Is it his turn to suck out? It is! An ace rescuing Tilston. As the all-ins have oh, yeah, staved off this. elimination not once but twice in Mateos. He's got to be frustrated with. Yeah, just have a little too much yeah, that looked like a little bit of an eye roll when he was uh, sipping his One Red Bull. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you won 150,000 or whatever. Nothing like it. You're up. So did the. Empathetic rap of the rail there from Tilston, who knows it's frustrating to have to go share these with Queen Four. <laughs> Where is it? Five hundred and fifty thousand. Heath shoots it up to five and a half. Suited baby ace on the button for Mateos. really nice hand and I think you know just generally speaking yeah you can put that in your three bet range especially when you're putting a lot of pressure on you would see some players mix sometimes you know in a non-final table situation mixing between calling and three betting but certainly this looks like a ripe spot for that three bet which pays off yep Mateos hauling it in back up to 26 million All the beautiful cash.
collected in the 250K is only awarded to the top five players, 632,000 already guaranteed. But that beautiful haul of 3.2 million plus at the top of the leaderboard is where the sights are set for all five of these players, including Keith Tilston, who obviously is definitely capable of navigating 13 bigs. Mateos showing activity. And those napkins head into the muck for Heath. Look at some push fold charts this morning, but I didn't have much time. Too busy, too busy planning flights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. I should let you use those at the table. Yeah, I wish we could just have a laptop right in front of us. <laughs> you got the fastest. Yeah. Tilston talking about not having time to look at push fold charts, but uh, maybe he could have spent a little time on looking at the chart for calling off against a small blind shove in your big. Well, for those out there scratching their temple going, what's a push fold chart? There has been tremendous computing power that has been introduced I'm into looking. poker. Some very brilliant minds have actually begun to sort of solve for what is objectively correct, at least in situations where you're playing a certain stack depth with certain pay jumps, ICM, as we talk about, independent chip model. And kind of takes a lot of the subjectivity out of the game, at least in, in that phase. Yeah, and when you are at a certain stack depth, it is nice to kind of know that if you want to, you can study and memorize those charts and play mistake-free poker. And I think that gives you a lot of confidence off of certain stack sizes to know that you're in a place where, unfortunately, even though it's not the sexiest of moves in terms of playing sort of robotically, you just know that if this is the spot you need to take, no matter what happens, you know, results aside, you could be happy with the decisions you've made. And I think that's comforting for a lot of players, especially if you are trying to be a professional. Certainly something that you want to be studying up on. I think I'm going to test you, Ollie, throughout the day and be like, okay, this hand off of this many bigs, is that a shove? See what you come up with. Tide is right, Maria. <laughs> that queen four wouldn't have been going in. Najad Bucks would have stayed on the rail. Nothing loose about opening with ace-king, okay. though, for Davies. Fourth place stack is going to run into a couple of tens here. Okay. And, of course, the only X factor is Mateos behind Kincaid, but certainly against Davies' stack size, this is a pretty easy decision for Kincaid. That X factor is very real, though. does create some concerns for Johnny. And we'll just three bet it to two million. Not looking to risk his entire stack. And now Mateos wakes up with ace jack suited and his concern is gonna be perhaps more squarely upon Kincaid's decision to three bet out of the small than Davies open. Yeah, definitely. You know that Davies could potentially have some raise folds off of that stack size. We see with his particular hand, of course, that he's planning to go with it. But all in. yeah, the all in comes through and Kincaid, of course, makes the call. But let's not gloss over Mateos, who did not make a meal out of that ace jack suited. Let it right go. Right, definitely a function of Kincaid three betting from the small blind again, giving Kincaid the respect. Three. Eight. for having, you know, the value range exactly. there to three bet with. Did we lose camera three there? What happened? <laughs> Something seismic happened? An isolated event? Short pause as the drama builds and the ace king ends up binking top pair on a rainbow flop. Davies now better than nine to one from this point forward to haul in 7.8 plus as the all-ins continue to fare well in the early going. 
Turn is clean, and now Anti sweating a 10. Davies. Looking to hold, and he does. 3.75, I believe. Trust but verify. And if there was a tracker on those chips, you know Tilson would just be thinking, oh, so Davies has has some of my chips now. Are you a sick pup that does that? <laughs> I feel like you are. You I track definitely am, Molly. as they travel I around mean. the felt. I am not I above <laughs> anti-railing people that I know ends up with my chips. <laughs> just salt all over you. Keith Tilston, the short stack, 3.2 million. Davies now slides into second as Kincaid moves back down the leaderboard. Enjoying a short stint in second. It's still the Adrian Mateos show, however. Top shelf fold of the ace jack suited. Avoiding any issues. I'll tell you what, that shaved head visor look, you're not going to get away with that outdoors in the summer <laughs> here in Vegas. You'll end up with lobster scalp here in the autumn. Okay, I'll allow it. Right, I mean, Kincaid knows he could rock this and get away with it right now, but next it is year, a look. not so much. I mean, the visor and poker go hand in hand. Used to be the green plastic from back in the day. The OG visor look. Meanwhile, Limpot, blind versus blind, Mateos and Tilston, both coming up empty. Is it Questions asked by Mateos, who can afford to ask them. Picks up a little pot there. And the benefit of being the chip leader on display. Well, the benefit of watching us on YouTube is it's free. But if you love poker, you got to subscribe to the channel. Post daily clips all year round. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to never miss any of the action. And, of course, subscriptions to the Poker Go product, also not a bad idea. Heath now with the box cars. Just sends it into the muck, Maria. No open? Yeah, I think, again, uh, just a function of not sure if he's able to get post-flop with that open, probably expecting there to be some heat with it being Mateos's button here. And again, just trying to save those two, two and a half big blinds that he might open to if he's not sure that he's going to be able to get post there and I understand it. Seeing Kincaid open a 550 directly behind him and then Tilston move over the top will obviously leave him feeling quite a bit better about folding those two sixes but ironically enough they were in the lead against both of these holdings and Kincaid has Tilston dominated. No. No, it's not. It is. I wouldn't bullshit you. To the flop we go. It is ace high. Kincaid looking very good. A lot of chop sweats today. <laughs> but you heard it. Heath wondering if there'll be a sweat to a chop, which there could still be. Yes, of course. 23% of the time. Queen of the jack could pair. The king would not be good. That would give Kincaid... Broadway, and so the eight on the river does seal Tilston's fate, going from second in chips coming in 
to now finishing in fifth. Pretty disappointing way to collect $632,000. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that ace queen against the ace jack not holding, obviously, pretty much sealed his fate here. But Tilston always manages to come and play these high rollers on occasion and show up at the final table. And I definitely feel like he will be back again. And I, too, feel like we haven't seen the last of Keith Knuckles. Not how he scripted things here today, but everybody enjoying a $300,000 pay jump courtesy of his departure. Ben Heath now officially on the short stack as you look at the leaderboard and that bracelet. Waiting on champion. This guy's <laughs> just in like a 16 minute right. on the river. Right. And a heat check here for Kincaid. Yeah, that was very good TV for the for for us. Pocket nine. For us sitting at the table. <laughs> yeah. A nine busy in Mateos's hand. And you know Adrian will be looking to Kind of lean on players with a multitude of different holdings in these Jack-9 suiteds. Kind of rate to be in the hand class that he could do it with. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think that Mateos yeah. is going to fold. Cool. Not going to three bet either, though. And that does open the door for Davies to go crab hunting. I guess you fish crabs. You don't hunt them. Unless they're land crabs, then I'm you're hunting them. I'm not sure there are land only crabs. I would say land only. But once they come out of the ocean, we're not fishing them anymore, are we? We are hunting them. And Davy's not going to do either as he sends his hand into the muck. Ben Heath in the big with Queen Jack off. Keith with 25 bigs to start the hand and just wondering what his best option will be here. Looks like call. Ten six four all diamonds and Heath has the only flush draw in this threesome. Kincaid staring at one over card, but Barrels away, 550K. And with two overs in the Jack of Diamonds, Maria, do we fight on? Definitely think that that's enough hand to continue in some fashion. I think that a lot of the times you don't expect Kincaid to be betting this monotone board with hands that he can't continue with. Of course, if it was more the ace high variety, sure, it sounds like a pretty standard C bet, but with these middling cards in play, he ends up just calling. Pot up to 3.1 plus, courtesy of that call from Heath. Board pairs on the turn. Check. And how uncomfortable is Kincaid gonna be with two nines here? Yeah, I think I like a check back from Kincaid. He certainly has showdown value, could be up against just the naked flush draw. Yes, sir. He does check back and a beautiful river for him, the deuce of hearts. Doesn't rate to change things at all. Oh, and Heath is going to get after it here. 625. Yeah, I think with the sizing especially, you know, of course, can contain the 10Xs, the 6Xs. Certainly keeps a good portion of hands in his value range with this particular sizing instead of, you know, going something more polarizing. Six and a quarter, just not enough weight for Kincaid to fold the two nines, and he will 
pick up a nice little pot there. And while he hauls it in, we send it over to our Jeff Platt, who is standing by with Keith Tilston. Level is up, now playing 150, 300,000 blinds. Well, Keith, we don't see you too often. Until we raise the buy-in a little bit, what draws you to these big high roller events? Uh, it's just exciting to be able to to come in and you're, I mean, I think I bought in yesterday and there was like 20 players left. So, you know, you're kind of buying in right into a spot where there's a lot of action and you're close to the money and everything. And, uh, yeah, it's just exciting. And they're also fairly short, too, which is nice. You don't have to take too much time. So it's really just the excitement and, you know, getting to come and compete kind of on the highest level in something. And uh, it's kind of the only thing I can do that in. So, and, and uh -huh. how do you feel you stack up to the competition? Uh, I'm definitely not winning long term. I would say in these events. I mean, there's been a, like a couple of years ago I, pl I was playing a lot and actually doing some setting and stuff. And I felt like, you know, if there was a decent number of amateurs in the event, like I, I felt like I might, might be doing all right. Um, like this event, I definitely was not. Like, <laughs> I mean, just in terms of not having played a lot and everything like that. So, really, I feel pretty fortunate to even made the money so um you know it was fun but um yeah it's i got, I got very lucky yesterday just to get here so thank you for the time good Thanks. seeing you thank back now at the feature table where four fight on 930k the next payout sad to see keith get showered early there maria i like watching him navigate out there in the high rollers yeah, and you heard in his interview how he was just being very humble about where he feels like he stands when he's playing these high rollers. But I've seen the opposite. I think a lot of the times Tilston, with the right stack, is able to put a lot of pressure and play on a high level. So, again, I think he was selling himself a little short today. But, of course, when you get unlucky, there's not much you can do. Yeah, really, that jack on the river was the beginning of the end for him. Pocket four is here for Ben Heath on the button. He has the shortest stack, definitely putting it all in the middle. Gather all the fold equity he can, and we'll see just how Kincaid likes Ace-10 suited for this price as he sits second in chips. Asks for a count. Certainly the ace-10 suited against the button shove is going to be ahead of all of those suited broadways. And there's going to be some offsuit broadways, of course, considering Heath is fairly like short. Yeah, he needs like an extra five seconds. I know that you'll be flipping against all the pairs. And I think a lot of the times you might expect Heath to not open shove the very top of his value range. You know, if we're talking about the big, big over pairs. Heath will likely be raising those instead of open shoving. And so I think this is a good call nope. from Kincaid to try to eliminate Barrel. a player. Obviously relieved mm -hmm. to see Mateos out of there, and he will take two suited overs up against the pocket fours, and you see it's virtually a pure coin flip here. And two spades on this flop. The four is still good, but having to fade a lot. This has, been, this has been a made-for-TV table. Yeah, incredibly sweaty here. The turn is a six, and now we pick up straight outs to go with what the flush. Is what is real. <laughs> and overcard <laughs> outs to the fours. 18 outs total for Kincaid. A lot for Ben Heath to fade. Took me a while to realize it was yeah, Too right. many outs is it's a not, thing, Ollie. Yeah. <sighs> Confirmed. As the seven pairs on the end somehow, four, Kincaid four, 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 seven, misses all of the draws. And Heath will swap places. Sliding into second, leaving Johnny on the short stack after the dust your clears. Heart rate there, ben? I don't want that knee going. Is this Brent Hanks' iPod?
went deep into the country streets for the backdrop. Davies and Kincaid, neck and neck. Heath, a few clicks ahead of that. Mateos seems content to let these guys cannibalize one another. Maria, obviously, he, had, he didn't have quite enough hand, but didn't take his chances with the ace-jack suited, for example. Yeah, so far, he's been able to stay out of trouble when it's appropriate, and, you know, either way, he's happy to watch some of these stacks tangle and perhaps, you know, keep the situation where he's able to pressure all stack sizes still. I feel like the royalty-free music selection has really gone down <laughs> in the last couple years, Ali. I don't Wait, know where, where that came from. Why do you assume that that oh, riff no. there was royalty-free? Oh, no. I mean, somebody out if there somebody made that music. If someone composed that and you're watching the stream, I'm sorry. <laughs> Shots fired. Someone poured their heart into that, what was it, electric banjo? What were we dealing with there? <laughs> Look, I like your side. And if indeed business daddy at Poker Go did spend money on that particular selection of, <laughs> of music, <laughs> we're going to have to have a little conversation. I feel like we could redeploy that capital. I mean, we could just go and record those sample things remember those electronic keyboards and you would just press like a button and it would have like a pre yeah samba bossa nova <laughs> whatever you just press it and it just plays like we could just do that or let's just you know maybe beatbox we can make a little something that way i feel like do you know how disgusting these mics would get if we decided <laughs> to beatbox you're not ready for it nine six deuce rainbow here as mateos outflops the a7 of heath Nice development for the opener from the button, the 600K. Heath has checked after defending. Does have the club working. Backdoor straightiness. It is 425. Top pair good for four and a quarter. Out of Mateos. And these are the sorts of situations, Maria, where Mateos' chip lead, the pay jumps, Heath being in second right now, kind of begin to factor in at times to how Heath might otherwise elect to proceed. He does make the call, but had he folded, I don't think either you or myself would have been altogether surprised. And now a troublesome card for him on the turn as he hits the seven. In agreement there, by the way, about a, a potential check fold with the A7 on that board? Yeah, I think if it wasn't suited and didn't have that backdoor flush possibility I, I definitely think that Heath could have potentially folded and of course nobody would have criticized that but I do think that hand is just a little too strong to fold but as you mentioned now you know turning this pair of sevens could make Heath feel comfortable when he really shouldn't be well the 1.55 will mitigate any comfort that the pair of sevens may have created as Mateos barrels once more. And Heath begins to question whether or not this is just Adrian being the boss stack or if the sevens are beat. Heath, still not a believer. Certainly, you know, hands like Jack 10s, of course, a possibility for Mateos to bet the flop and turn with. Well, Heath did make the call. Pot up to 5.6. Now he checks a third time. First over card to the nine, materializing. And we'll see whether or not Mateos decides to go for value. He does not. Checks back. You surprised? No, not at all. I think at that point, he's probably happy to get the two barrels of value and show it down on the river. How much Jack X is in Heath's range, though? Enjoying I mean, not a lot, again. but again, I don't well, think that maybe Mateos well. thought the kicker wasn't good enough with the 10. Well, 
A shout out to everybody watching our preview stream on YouTube. Show us some love by hitting the like button. To show us even more love, how about subscribe to PokerGo.com. You get unlimited access to all of our content. Use the promo code 250K for 20 bucks off an annual sub. Everybody in the YouTube chat and the free stream going on right now, keep the subs coming. You think that was the same band in that <laughs> in that music library? There? I'm actually afraid to open my Twitter now because I feel like someone's going to slide in there with some hate because this is their kind of music, you know? And but you can always just block those people. <laughs> you know about that, right? I heard about that function, yeah, Sully. I don't employ it as often as I should, though. That's or for sure. It's because you're weak-willed and not <laughs> adequately vindictive and spiteful. I would love to see the list of people you have blocked on your Twitter. I have more people blocked than I have followers. <laughs> 800,000 people I've blocked. Sounds about right. I mean. No, I'm not a blocker. I'm a muter, though. I am a serial muter. Oh, my God. You're so passive aggressive. I am. That is, that is my style. That is so lame. Lie. Just block them instead <laughs> of mute them. I get it. You don't want to indulge. Well, on the topic of indulgence, set your clocks for 5 o'clock as we indulge you in more coverage. High rollers, 50K and 100K still to come as the 2021 World Series of Poker winds down. Winding up is Seth Davies with the ace seven, and he delivers 675,000 to the middle. I feel like that's an appropriate way to describe his raise, given that he has plenty of baseball on his resume, played in junior college before studying to become an orthopedic surgeon over at the University of Oregon. Davies got into poker at the ripe old age of 18 during recovery from a couple of elbow surgeries. He had a lot of free time. I can't imagine clicking a mouse while he was playing online sit and goes <laughs> uh, in rehab was good for the old Tommy John. <laughs> My call. Ever played so much online poker, you had a little aggravated ligament joint something thing? For sure. But I think I had that long ago when I was just on my phone texting too much. Oh. That might not be from online poker. All right. Leave. You've done way more texting than clicking. Meanwhile, we've got a three-way affair as Kincaid flatted with the two sixes. And Mateo speculates when the price is right from the big. Two checks in front of the A7. 2.3 plus in the middle. You see Davies a little wary of this situation here. back now a jack on the turn second over card to the sixes does deliver a gut shot straight draw to Mateos I think at this point with this run out thus far everyone's gonna get to see a free river Indeed, second round of checks and a second jack on the board. Sixes begin to look good. Speaking of looking good, where does one get those sunglasses? Six seventy-five. They got Tom Ford vibes, don't they? Yeah, I mean, I definitely like the sunglasses more than I like the visor, that's for sure. Oh, I get it. You don't like the wind. Wow, no pushback? What's wrong with the win? No, no, no. I, oh. lo I love it. Oh. I mean, okay. I thought that this was just a rhetorical question here. It is clear what part of that I don't like. Oh, thank you.
Are we going to go with Tom Ford then? Final answer? I think so. That's That would be my guess. I feel like this is the point at which we request to get a zoom in on the temple. Like Tom Ford for Gucci or just Tom Ford? Tom Ford's. Tom Ford doesn't design for Gucci anymore. He never d he d he used to though. He used to, but he's okay, moved so on. He's got his own that fashion that's house 20, now. How do we know that that's a 2021 season? You think Kincaid is polishing off some like two decade old sunglasses to wear to this high roller final table? I mean, I have a couple sunglasses that I love so much that I still wear. I don't care when it's from. Well, listen, Jackie Onassis, I can't wait to see him. <laughs> Ace deuce for Mateos out of the small blind. Clears Davies Queen Jack off suit. Not the chattiest collection, but uh, the stakes are high. That said, we've seen some high roller tables where people are pretty <laughs> relaxed. Get a look there at the top 10 all time Spaniard list. Yeah, Mateos. Up in the dining start. Comfortably. What just happened? Above all others, oh, Sergio Aido. Oh, uh, and Carlos uh, Mortensen. Yeah, we got to okay. use a new deck. Yeah, don't, yeah use, don't use that deck. Yeah. We need a new deck. I haven't played in a while, but I feel like that should be a rule. It'll seem like a deck change situation. Well, why no, are you no, putting no. it back in there? No, you can use the blue one. We just need a new red deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah but they put the shuffle, but yeah, I well, need to change that one. True, yeah. Looks like something's wrong. We need a new red deck. With the red deck, according to the players. Cards do get beat up throughout the course of play. Obviously, those automatic shufflers aren't easy on them either. talk about not being easy on things. Mateos with the button and the chip lead. Not going to be easy on the blinds as he piles. Davies just quickly folding the ace deuce suited. And Heath also has an ace. He is in the big. Slightly different proposition. But of course, He's not going to want to potentially hit the locker room before he has a chance to determine Seth Davies' fate, who sits with the shorter of the two stacks. And that pay jump between fourth and third is over $400,000. Adrian, how about uh, some pink? Fish? Yeah, oh. just pink. Right. Thanks. Right, of course. Wait, 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 we're, we're not going to use the red deck. We're not going to use it. Reminds me of growing up when you got to be the banker in Monopoly. We're not going to use a deck that was dropped okay. on the floor. Growing up, fun. you don't right, still fun. play Monopoly, though? You still play Monopoly? I love Monopoly. That deck was dropped all over the floor. We're not going to play I wish you guys it. could see her face when she said that. It was <laughs> definitely alarming. There's some sort of Reddit thread involved in he this. Argue. It must be the rule. Strange board game fetish you have. That must be the rule. Okay, okay, the rule. They sometimes just don't like changing these that have the, like, stuff in for the card reading. I'm learning the new, like, the... I love well, them. while we get that deck swapped out, let's send it down to yeah, Jeff Platt. Yeah. Well, Adrian, what's the level of pressure you feel entering this final table as the chip leader? Uh, of course, I, I'm not that I'm the favorite to win today, and because I have most of the chips in play, but there is a long way. There is still four more players left. Uh, I need to to take all the chips, and it's a long way yet. So let's see if I I could finish. But yeah, I will try my best. The 250K, of course, brings out the best of the best. Describe for us how tough this field is. Yeah, the field is really tough. There is amazing players uh, out there, but I'm really used to play against them because we travel around the world playing the highest stakes and we know each other. So at the end, it's a special tournament for sure, but at the end of the day, it's just one more day playing one more high roller against these guys. But that one feels a little bit special, like World Series, highest buying of the of the series, and uh, the bracelet too is, is something really cool, and I would love to win. Thank you for the time. Good luck today. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And obviously that interview came earlier, prior to the beginning of play with Adrian, who si still sits at the top of the leaderboard, north of 30 million right now. The odds on favorite to win the bracelet at this point, but 
Anything can happen. Do you ever wonder, Maria, why it is that these guys are willing to pony up such large sums of cash to play in events where there isn't always a ton of value? It is you and right. other world Honestly. beaters. So the path to victory is not paved with, you know, any any easiness. I think that, especially if you look at who entered this 250K specifically, I think in the regular high rollers' minds, if there are, you know, maybe 15, 10 to 15% of the field that are rec players, then they are absolutely willing to take the edge that they have against them and then work with that very, very small edge they have against the other regular high roller players obviously you know we know that when you get to the very elite that edge is so incredibly small but you know all you need in this field are four or five players that are not on that level and i think that's enough reason to justify buying in and entering and taking that shot well as mateos hauls another one in we once again, send it over to Jeff Platt. A list of buy-ins that Adrian Mateos has won tournaments at. <clears throat> $500, $650, 1K, $1,500, 2K, 5K, 10K, and 25K. If that doesn't show you how well-rounded Mateos is, this should. How about four straight top 20 GPI player of the year finishes from 2016 to 2019. And if for some reason you're still on the fence as to how his skill translates across all tournaments, here's three World Series of Poker bracelets. One came in a 1,840 player field in a $1,500 buy-in, a 375 player field at the WSOP Europe main event, and a 129 player field in the 10K heads up in 2017. Adrian Mateos, perhaps the most versatile player we have in this game. Ali? Thanks, Jeff, and I think that resume definitely reads as versatility. Obviously, as his career has gone on, the buy-ins have escalated. And there is something about all the pros that line up to play these. The other day I saw a tweet from Dan Smith referring to how there's just something about playing high-stakes poker that makes it infinitely more enjoyable. And for people like... Me, I don't know about you, it's more nightmare fuel to me. The stress, <laughs> right. the pressure, and the fact that everybody you're facing is so good. No, I and I agree. I think, you know, to each their own for that situation because for someone like Dan Smith, who is, you know, self-admittedly a little bit of a degen sometimes, I think that playing for such high stakes is what helps him play his absolute best, and that makes it very exciting. Davies in the big blind after the Mateos limp pre will call this 300k question mark from Adrian who now hits a nine to take the lead so some real run good there as Davies sniffed out maybe the king high would be good backdoor Broadway backdoor clubs neither of which come through gotcha. now Mateos checking and will Davies try to lay claim to this one and a half million. And you see his eyes darting between what would presumably be the tournament clock offset and Mateos. Checks back now, hits a five. Do we bet a nine here? I think Mateos feels pretty secure that, of course, if Davies had, you know, an ace-x type hand, he would have bet the turn with that and the jack Bet's most likely as well. So does seem like he feels he can go for value here. really interesting though betting 1.5 million full pot 
Yeah, I mean, it really makes Davies think. I think I am a little surprised to see this sizing out of Mateos' exact holding. Putting some ambition behind this nine, maybe designed to clear a jack as we see Davies pay off. Yeah, I mean, and I think that is why Davies paid off, right, is that sizing in particular really made Davies feel like perhaps his pair of fives could be good. And yeah, uh, now I'm not 100% sure if uh, Adrian was trying to perhaps get a jack to fold or not. But again, I think fairly yeah. safe that he didn't think that Davies had top pair there by any means. As well, played. the same way that Davies didn't imagine a nine was <laughs> in Mateos' range. Mateos, in turn, couldn't have expected that Davies hit the five. So I feel like if there was any fold equity he was looking to realize, I think targeting maybe a jack with that sizing. But you wonder if Davies is willing to call with a five, you imagine he'll call with a jack. Saw Mateos now has two thirds of the chips in play, almost 33 million to start this hand. Does not open the button, and Davies on the short stack with a seven suited, sub 10 big blinds. All in. Ready it's time. All in. Oh, no, Ben Heath wakes up with two jacks. Yeah, nothing Davies look, could do off of that look. stack size and that holding. Oh, hold on. Well, the time was right, but the outrageous hands. timing was wrong. What's that? Pretty outrageous hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are good hands. On both yeah. sides. <laughs> For the old eight bigs. was a five. Davies would like King to get King his side King card King. working in conjunction Sorry. with the ace to maybe be able to make a wheel. Nice and spicy. Instead, he goes to the flop behind and stays that way as the ten of clubs works. No, just ace. One clap. Luck. I'd rather just have an ace. And obviously, this pot <laughs> extremely crucial for Davies, but let's not forget how important this is for Heath to hold. No added equity on the turn for Seth Davies in the form of a club or a wheel draw. And he is left pulling at an ace and an ace only. Is it there? No. The five of diamonds seals Seth Davies' fate as our fourth place finisher. He will take home $930,000 and add that to his career live earnings of over 7.7. 7. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Add some points to his GPI player of the year standings as well. Currently sits 46. So we've got our podium, but we don't have the order just yet. Vibes of gold coming off of Adrian Mateos is almost 33 million strong stack, but not if Ben Heath and Johnny Kincaid have anything to say about it. And with those two stacks neck and neck, it should make for interesting action moving forward three-handed. Ten seconds. 900. Raise 900,000. Heath getting after it from the small. Kincaid over and out with 10-4. And we will send it down to our Jeff Platt, who is standing by with Seth Davies. Well, Seth, how would you sum up how today went? Uh, well, it was pretty short stacked final table, so we saw a lot of all-ins happen really quickly. Um, so, I mean, I got one pay jump. That's, you know, can't be too mad, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate we were pretty shallow and like when the stacks are distributed this way where it's one huge stack and four smaller stacks, it's kind of like one of the four of us is going to get lucky and get second or have a chance to win. So 
I wasn't that guy today. What's what's the level of frustration like when you keep coming so close to that real signature win? Uh, you know, I'd like for it to happen for sure, obviously, but uh, I mean, it's something you can't control. So, um, yeah, it's not fun to double stuff and get fifth place or whatever. But I mean, it'll come. Like, I'll I'll keep playing. You know, I'll get my chance to win a huge one. I know we'll see you again and again. Thanks for the time. Appreciate right, it. Davis will be back in the saddle, no doubt. And speaking of being in the saddle, how about Kincaid with a couple of jacks? Unfortunately, Jack Deuce, not enough for Mateos to contend. And a little mustard on that stack up there from Kincaid. Obviously, you hate not getting action when you got a nice hand, but careful what you wish for. Right, I mean, if they were jacks, <laughs> they weren't aces, bro. It's okay. Even the aces are definitely the road to an exit for so many people, in particular in the main event. You just see it over and over, even super late. Aces against Ace King, good night. Aces against a smaller pair, flop a set, good night. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, like, <laughs> Ace King oh. pairs, those are quality hands. I've, I've put aces up against uh, the seven four suited before, and uh, they made that one real painful for me, so. Yuck. Well, the good news is you're over it. Oh, definitely. It wasn't like it happened, you know, in 2010 or anything, Ali. Yeah, no, you've moved well past it at this point. Mateos wanting to play pots, limps with the eight deuce off. Heath not looking to inflate with the ace high, which is still good on the 10-6-5 rainbow flop. Checks back, now pairs. Mateos picks up the bad side of a gut shot. That's 1.2 million. Wow. Swinging, over pit. <laughs> Yeah, big sizing here, knowing that he's not likely to win at showdown with this eight high. So, of course, this is exactly designed to target this type of bottom pair holding, 5x holding, those that will check back the flop and really be put to a big decision for this type of bet size. And uh, Heath looks like he's not willing to give up. Think about how gutsy this is, by the way. We're talking about a pay jump between third and second of over $630,000, $640,000. And as the board pairs on the river on the heels of this Heath call, Mateos has inflated this thing to 3.3. Will he pressure Ben more? There was no flush draw on the turn. Pretty bad river card, I think, for Mateos to swing again. Just because, as I mentioned, there will be quite a few 5Xs. But <laughs> I guess Mateos is not one to give up, even knowing that he came along for that full overbet. I mean... This is a really big decision for Heath. I think Heath would imagine that Mateos would have gone for a slightly smaller sizing with the 10x hand on the turn, perhaps. And so that doesn't quite make sense to him now and doesn't really believe that with this particular run out that Mateos would go for value with this sizing with hands and this that is Mateos don't contain trips. Really just putting Heath in the blender based on the situation and you see Ben using not one but two time extensions as he mulls this thing over.
Yeah, I mean, Heath definitely understands that the sizing on the turn and the river doesn't really make sense for, you know, a 10x type hand or a 6x type hand. And so if Mateos is really trying to represent trips or even better in this situation, is that a believable enough story for Heath to let go of the fives and threes here? Looks like, Another. is that his last time chip perhaps? Not sure. But I absolutely love what we're seeing from Adrian Mateos here. Obviously, it doesn't feel particularly plausible to Heath, but the situation is such that if he were to call and be wrong, there is some decent distance between himself and Kincaid, and Heath digs in, properly sniffing it out. And hard-earned Mateos bucks are going to be headed his way. A disappointing outcome, of course, for Johnny Kincaid, who now is looking up at Ben Heath and some decent distance between the two of them with this oh-so-meaningful pay jump from third to second. Yeah, and let's not sleep on Heath for that decision because it is one thing to be able to sniff it out, but it's another thing to put the chips in the middle. And there are a lot of players that would have ran that story back in their head and come to that conclusion, but not willing to risk almost half their stack to do so. And for Heath, Rewarded for acting on what he believed was the right decision. Ten seconds. Call. He's now limping in. Kincaid looks down at King Six off suit. Check. Checks it. Beautiful flop for Heath. Top pair, gut shot, straight draw. And in this spot for Heath, we're going to approach things with a, a blend of Checking in order to induce and then also getting busy betting our own hands. Yeah, I think that there's also this possibility where when it goes check, check, that you can size in a way that if your opponent has just a little something, then they might not believe you have a hand as strong as top pair. So certainly by mixing it up here, he can oftentimes get called by a lot of worse hands. I mean, we see that Kincaid still hasn't connected much with this board, although he does turn that gut shot. And uh, before he can even put the chips in, Kincaid folds. All too ready to part ways with that king six. A little rally now for Heath of over 14 million, 48 big blinds as it stands. Middle of the pack. And I think that call there by Heath was a bit of a statement as well that says, listen, I know what the ICM landscape is as well as you do, but I'm not going to let you leverage it to bully me off of hands. And yeah, I certainly for a lot of players, you know, the pre-flop approach is going to be different than post. So I think Heath, we've seen him willing to make some big folds pre and allow Mateos to leverage that ICM pressure, but post is a different story when it's not, you know, for your tournament life. When you have a little room and you can afford to be wrong. But if you have, you know, your ear to the ground in these high roller events and amongst those players, I think a lot of them will tell you that they have a lot of respect for Ben Heath's game. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Everyone's got a lot of respect for two aces. Cue the seven four suited though, Ali. Six deuce not gonna do it. Okay, cue the five deuce suited because think this is going to be a good enough combination to come along with from the big blind in most cases.
I'm not saying I want to see aces cracked, but I'm just saying it's good oh. to know that I'm not alone, you know? You're spiteful. <laughs> you truly are. It's remarkable. You're like just one big ball of carbon and sodium. <laughs> Two threes and a ten roll off here. Aces sit very pretty after Heath defended. Not a diamond to be found on this flop for Ben, who checks it. That's 450000 and this is Should why really spite never it. pays, Ollie. Right? Like all these years of me putting this needless energy into feeling this type of way, mm -hmm. what does it do for me? You answer the question, Maria. <laughs> I already know the answer. Nothing. There's a look at Dana Kincaid, Johnny's wife, along with his sister Michelle on the left. Was that a wave or was there a fly? <laughs> I think she was, you know, like when you're at the horse track and those dudes take the daily program and they kind of hit their hip with it. I think she was whipping her man along. Let's go. Let's go. Been raised open with the queen nine suited on the button from Mateos. Kincaid with an ace in the big. Defense. Call. The flop we go. Open ender and ace high. Sits well in front of queen nine. Slips it. Mateus in position. Just hoping to take this down with the C bet, but. And K checking it over clearly looks like he will at least check call. It makes the most sense if you choose to play your hand this way, considering you don't have a backup diamond. Ten Whoa. Oh, wow. I did not expect the, the all-in necessarily to be declared, but... Playing for the win. Yeah, I mean, definitely going to continue with that hand in some form or fashion. Showing some moxie there. It was Johnny Kincaid. Tell you what. If you can walk the crypto streets... You got a stomach for some gamble. Yeah, I mean, clearly high variance lines don't make these people sweat, so. No surprise then <laughs> when the check raise all in happens, as you saw the tournament summary there. Brought to you by Solve for Why, the final 10% of the field. As Heath and Kincaid do everything they can to dethrone Mateos, the chip leader, wire to wire so far. Shout out to everybody watching on YouTube, the free stream. Just keep those subs coming and thanks for hanging with us. Kincaid, another big pocket pair. Two black queens, and Heath definitely has the kind of hand that he could defend with. In Jack Nine suited. Heads up. Extra 400k invested. And a heart in the window, followed by another behind nice. it, producing a flush draw for Heath. This texture not at all alarming for the two black queens, which waste no time barreling away. 450k, the follow up sizing.
Yeah, this time he has a much healthier piece than the last time when he defended with the suited connected hands and two overs, but again, not sure how aggressively you want to proceed with this combination. Surely you know that there's a lot of good heart cards for your hand. And Heath seeks clarity as he check raises to 1.18. If you, pile. if you expect your opponent to be c-betting this type of texture at a pretty high frequency, then of course there's going to be a good part of their c-betting range Ten that seconds. they're willing to bet fold, and that makes it a really nice pickup for this jack nine of hearts. But even if they choose to continue, of course, you know that you have a lot of equity. So not really a spot where you hate inflating the pot when you have the possibility of taking it down at this juncture, but again, we see Kincaid with just a very strong hand, all and again, moving yeah, all yeah, in. Yeah. That's and the, the Heath worst. just snap folded, by the way, didn't at all yeah, even that's, consider it. That's just the worst outcome, right? You just don't get to realize your equity, but there's not very many hands that Kincaid would have played like that, so sometimes you gotta take your chance. Well, there's no risk in watching on YouTube, which if you're doing right now, hit the like button. Why not? And don't forget, you can get unlimited access to more than 4,000 hours of poker content by subscribing to PokerGo.com. Be sure to use the promo code 250K to save $20 on an annual plan. And Andrew Jackson. Do you know your dead presidents? Six. I, as in, I know which bills they're on, but, but what yeah. else do I need to know about them, Molly? Who's on the 50? Oh, snap. You went with the 50? The, the 50 that is cursed and no poker player carries a 50 on them, and you're going to ask me who's on the 50? Okay, let me think about this. First name, Ulysses. S. Grant. Okay, very nice. How about the $2 bill, tough girl? Oh, God. I actually have a $2 bill, so I could cheat right now if I wanted to. Why on earth do you have a $2 bill? Because Frank Cancella, Casella gave me a $2 bill. Oh, wait, it's coming to me. Perhaps Jefferson is on the $2 bill? Well, why don't you whip it out? <laughs> oh, so did you not know the answer and you're just trying to test me? I don't you, walk around I with mean, $2 bills. What kind of freak show do you think I am? I mean, if, if this is the testing portion of the commentary, then I'm going to come at you with some uh, push-shove situation, yeah, see how you fare. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> Ace-King taking it down there with a walk. On the topic of not fair. Give me some action. I feel like if one goes to the adult cabaret with $2 bills, they can really make everybody else feel like a pauper. You make it rain with twos, you're <laughs> making everybody else look half as cool as you. I made it rain with 20s, Ollie, please. $2 bills. $2 bills, this guy. Guys. How do rich. Do you hear this guy? $2 bills Make here? it rain with 20s? <laughs> What kind of animal are you? <laughs> There's actually this really nice establishment in L.A. called Jumbos, and it's actually just more one like one a one like one cabaret one. type dancers, burlesque? you know, burlesque. Yes, exactly. Okay. And right. they are very talented and they deserve every 20 that I have ever given to them. And Approximate more. sobriety level when you elected <laughs> to shower people with 20s. I'm going to go with non sober. I mean, I went to an ATM. All they gave me was 20s, so uh, who am I to ask for change when these people are putting it out there and they're so incredibly talented? What is it that they're putting out there, oh. Maria? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> no, this is an art form. G genuinely, like, you know how much strength it takes? How much core? I just To invert? Yeah, I mean, I no, don't. really, this was not, this was, you know... This was a very, very This skilled. was you supporting the arts. Absolutely. Raise it to 900,000. Heath. Supporting an open with Jack 9 makes it 900K. 
and seven. Suit of and connected eight. is Kincaid. Obviously, he isn't going to go anywhere, but wants to figure out I'm who's sorry. got who covered. And a flat Call. Call. from Kincaid. Complete. You'd hate to see a time extension wasted on a call, but... Oh, wow. How about the joint? Wow. No waiting for Heath here on a Queen-10-8 board where Kincaid has a gutty and bottom pair and presumably isn't going to be getting away from this hand anytime soon. 2.1 million in the middle. Let's see what sort of sizing Heath comes with. Obviously, he's spadeless, which could potentially be an issue. And might that be influential in his choice to lead with the nuts as opposed to check? Yeah, and I think also considering he is the preflop aggressor, I think a lot of the times, whether you have it or not, your opponent will be expecting what? Will be, hold on. Can K just fold it? I thought I had some time to talk about what Heath was doing and why, because I thought Kincaid was going to think about it and call and now, see As it turns out, obviously, card. Kincaid was correct. He was up against the nuts and folded, but I think both you and I stand in disbelief at the notion that one would defend the 8-9 suited flop bottom pair and a gutty and just get away from it. But perhaps he's out there knowing something we don't know. I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a lot of players that you would see that would give up that type of equity against one bet and in position, no less. Mm -hmm. Definitely an interesting play by Kincaid. Ten seconds. Raise it. 1.3. Upstairs. Note the sizing from Kincaid to 1.3. Yeah, pretty big, but again, you are out of position, and you probably don't want Mateos to be calling too wide. Ten seconds. Anywhere, you know, from 3 to 4x, pretty standard, I think, from this small blind versus big blind scenario, but Mateos does give up the nine for suited. Are there hands we imagine that Mateos would fold to 4x that he would call 3x? Uh, I think the nine for suited, Mateos would call for, you know, probably close to 3x, definitely two and a half x and up a little bit between that range. So the chips aren't there. wasted then from three to 4x potentially. There is some added hands that get snared into a fold yeah and again it's also just about how you think your opponent is approaching their opening range from the small blind against the chip leader and the big blind and so if you think they're going to be a little bit tighter of course then certainly you don't want to be too loose in your defense oh mateos limping heath with the pocket pair Then content to check back. And sixes are still good on a jack high rainbow flop. Nice texture for Heath Sand. Check. Tails checks king high. Check back from Heath in a disaster turn as Mateo smacks the king in this 900k pot to jump in front. Six. 
600,000. Yeah, pretty unfortunate. Heath wanted to keep the pot small. And now, you know, knowing Mateos is willing to fire even without it in situations where they think that your range is pretty weak and trying to get folds when perhaps Mateos has a hand that doesn't have any real showdown value. It is hard to just fold to this bet. Oh. As played, Heath will keep Mateos, on it, Mateos honest. And Mateos improves to kings and sevens now. And remember, Heath dug in in a similar sort of spot against Mateos. Yeah, I definitely don't want to discount the fact that there are some draws from the turn that have missed as well so clearly there will be a lot of bluffs in mateos's range if he has one of those combinations and look at the sizing <laughs> here from mateos one and a half x even larger than the last occasion on which he came out swinging against heath so caught him with his hand in the cookie jar And in context, it does feel a little bit like this is Adrian trying to make sure he puts enough in there to get Ben to let go of whatever it is that he was so fond of on the turn. But he sniffs it out, decides the two sixes are not going to be ridden to victory. Correctly lays it down. If you win your fourth bracelet, you have two wrists and two ankles, and you've basically <laughs> completed all appendages. You've adorned them all with jewelry. 600,000. Or well. shackles, <laughs> from the sounds of it. You can shackle me with a World Series bracelet anytime you want. Shackle me with the payout. That's that. <laughs> I'm with you on that. No. Heads up. Mateos open limp the button. Kincaid says run it. And we have a situation on our hands here as Kincaid has flopped trips, sixes, quickly checks it over to Mateos, who's got Queen Jack for Jackson sixes, a good kicker, and the Queen of Clubs working. That's 425,000. Yeah, we'll see if Kincaid wants to respond by fast playing with the trips or not. Of course, you know, there's the obvious flush draw right now. Ten seconds. Kincaid does indeed check raise. Mateos asking for a count. And this is so much hand with the ace of clubs, Maria. Maybe we opt to flat instead? Yeah, but I do think having the ace of clubs make it a nice combination to fast play because, of course, you are sometimes representing perhaps the nut flush draw. And so if you know that Mateos can't have the ace of clubs in his hand, then that could potentially factor into Mateos' decision to put you on that type of draw, which if Mateos has a good enough piece, he will have to continue. Fair point. Oh. As we see Mateos, understandably, plunking down over two and a half million more to take the turn. And that turn is clean for both holdings. All in. All in. Kincaid moves all in. Not quite full pot, but still a healthy chunk of change. And I think Mateos' consideration really just comes down to how often does he think Kincaid will be making this type of play with just a flush draw. I mean... Sometimes you don't expect somebody to play, you know, perhaps a Jack X type hand this strong, but 
what if that was a line that Kincaid could perhaps take with jacks and sixes as well? You know, the queen kicker's good. It's, it's not the best. Mateo's blocking the jack of diamonds is a bit of a concern, is it not? Because we would expect that inferior jacks that pick up a diamond flush draw maybe on the turn would be in the range of holdings that Kincaid would be willing to pile with. Yeah, for sure. And I think at this point, it's really just down to whether Mateo thinks Kincaid has trips or a flush draw. Adrian dressing him down there. You can see he's not at all happy with this spot. No. Nice fold from Mateus. <laughs> and I mean, he Does asked Kincaid if he was bluffing, and Kincaid said no. And I was convinced whether or not I saw the cards. I mean, I thought that that was just a very honest response. In okay. turn, I thought it was a very tepid response <laughs> from Camp Kincaid there on the rail with the golf clap. I'm going to need a little bit more passion out of you, ladies. We'll let him think about it on the break. And as we head to that break, here is a look at the leaderboard. Ben Heath with 10 million on the short stack, but playable depth of 25 bigs as it stands now. But of course, the blinds continuing to escalate. Kincaid in second. And still the overwhelming chip lead for Mateos. Maria and I will step aside, but we'll be back shortly with continuing coverage of the 250K Super High Roller. Stay close. In the series, Maria, I feel like you can just start typing English words into the promo code field, and <laughs> you're drawn live to get 20 bucks off with a variety of them. There should be like a hidden $50 off sub right. for someone who just m magically Somebody can guess that just the right types in <laughs> configuration. Narwhal, and you're like, oh yeah, Narwhal, that's good for 50 bucks. Queen Jack suited oh. for Davies. Do you know what a Narwhal is, Isn't Maria? It? Some type of animal, yes. sea creature, yes, with the horn. Oh, the cheatsy! <laughs> Our producer you here know, saw him holding his hand up to his head. I mean, I think I knew. I just wasn't sure. I it's just like needed the a confirmation. Walrus meets unicorn thing. Right, right. Text. But that is not the promo code. That's not the secret one, guys. We don't know that. Keep guessing. <laughs> 10 deuce turns into a flush draw and a gut shot straight draw as well for Ben Heath, who's done quite well out of the big after Davies limped in. Check. Davies checking it over to Heath. Well, 10 high may not be good. There are so many paths to victory if it isn't. You see Heath with more equity than the queen high. Ten seconds. Decides to check back. And now hits a deuce. Yeah, Heath definitely taking the low variance line to try to realize all of that equity. <laughs> Davies feels resigned to lay back with this queen jack and let it go if Ten seconds. Heath were to so much as rattle his chips. But stranger things have happened, and Ben Heath checking back once more with the pair of deuces. Maria surprised at all by that? No, I think that after you check back the flop, once you turn some showdown value with that bottom pair, if you bet, there's not really anything you're protecting from necessarily because I don't think that many hands or are going to call unless they have you beat. And so, of course, you still do have that flush as a backup. So just Check. getting to the river here, I think, Check. is fairly important Check. off of these stack sizes. And so checked all the way down. Every one of these soldiers in front of these guys worth oh so much, given the payouts and the pay jumps. Fifth to fourth, almost $300,000. Well, I think Mateos is obviously a candidate. Yeah, but Mateos can do that because he has the chip lead. But if we're talking about maybe seeing kind of a middling stack push back against Mateos, I don't think we will see too much of that. 
Or even push back against a shorter stack, Maria, given that obviously the cluster is fairly tight between Tilston all the way down to Raise Davies, as you see the counts at the top of your screen. Tilston with the ace queen does open to 600,000. It would bring me so much joy to know down there at Great Point Capital if he wanders into the kitchenette, the break room. Someone just goes, hey, Knuckles. <laughs> you know how happy that would make me? 10 seconds. Unhappiness would rate to be the experience Rolling. for Johnny Rolling. Kincaid, however, with the ace jack suited. He moves all in, and Tilton, <coughs> pardon me, is going to ask for a count here. Yeah, just shy of 20 big blinds here. I think ace queen is just too strong. But again, you don't really want to sacrifice your chip position when you're Tilston and potentially lose this pot and then become the short stack. One, two, three. No, it's four. One, three. Four. Yeah. How close is it? I, yeah, <laughs> I think it's close, but it's a call. You know, I think it's just one of those things that you have to take the spot. Your hand is really good. Again, you may not know too much of what Kincaid's shoving range over your open is, and if it's a little non-standard or deviates in some yeah. way from what the appropriate shoving range should be, then I think ace-queen is probably an even better call. To the flop we go. Tilston looking good. And that fact remains on the paired flop, though some chop opportunities have presented themselves for Kincaid. Over 10 million in this pot. And the ace comes off, so Tilston just needs to fade the jack, which was the case from the onset. Bell tolls for Johnny. Is a hook there on the river? Oh it my is. goodness. <sighs> wow. Stone cold. That is oh, not a fun feeling there for Tilston. Really, really <sighs> nasty river card there. Unless your name's Johnny Kincaid, in which case there is nothing but Though to be fair, one could describe ace-queen against ace-jack as having been on the right side of the equation. But in terms of outcome, all these guys have enjoyed a suck out or two. Kincaid, meanwhile, slides into second after hauling in that 10 million. Raise it to 5,125,000. And now Mateos wants to polish Tilston off with this Queen 10. Keith weighing it over with Queen 4. Just how wide is Mateos in this spot? 10 seconds. I mean, fairly wide, but for Tilston, I think just a little too weak. It looks like he is Hold going to there. decide to put it in there. Okay, and he's dominated. Are you surprised at all by Keith's willingness to draw a line in the sand with queen four off of 14 bigs? I am. I understand that he's the shortest stack, so he I feels like, like he has the least to lose. And I'm sure, you know, the pay johns don't matter that much to him in the sense that, you know, he doesn't play for a living and, you know, this spot he's probably just playing to win. But at the same time, I think he could have found a better spot. He's looking for a four. Instead, he hits the queen, right. as does Mateos. Okay. And now some chop opportunities exist for Tilston. 0.3% to hit running fours. Jack, three, not a helpful right. card. He now needs a jack or better on the river to chop it up. Is it his turn to suck out? It is an ace rescuing Tilston. As the all-ins 
Staved staved off years. elimination not once but twice in Mateos. He's got to be frustrated with. Yeah. Tilston talking about not having time to look at push full charts, but uh, maybe he could have spent a little time on looking at the chart for calling off Ooh. against a small blind That's shove in your big. Well, for those out there scratching their temple going, what's a push full chart? There has been tremendous computing power that has been introduced Not into cool. poker. Some very brilliant minds have actually begun to sort of solve for what is objectively correct, at least in situations where you're playing a certain stack depth with certain pay jumps, ICM, as we talk about, independent chip model. And kind of takes a lot of the subjectivity out of the game, at least in, in that phase. Yeah, and when you are at a certain stack depth, it is nice to kind of know that if you want to, you can study and memorize those charts and play mistake-free poker. And I think that gives you a lot of confidence off of certain stack sizes to know that you're in a place where, unfortunately, even though it's not the sexiest of moves in terms of playing sort of robotically, you just know that if this is the spot you need to take, no matter what happens, you know, results aside, you could be happy with the decisions you've made. And I think that's comforting for a lot of players, especially if you are trying to be a professional. Certainly something that you want to be studying up on. I think I'm going to test you, Ollie, throughout the day and be like, okay, this hand off of this many bigs, is that a shove? See what you come up with. Tide is right, Maria. <laughs> that queen four wouldn't have been going in. Najad Bucks would have stayed on the rail. Nothing loose about opening with ace king, though, for Davies. Fourth place stack is going to run into a couple of tens here. And of course, the only X factor is Mateos behind Kincaid, but certainly against Davies stack size, this is a pretty easy decision for Kincaid. That X factor is very real, though. It does create some concerns for Johnny. And we'll just three bet it to two million. Not looking to risk his entire stack. And now Mateos wakes up with ace jack suited and his concern is going to be perhaps more squarely upon Kincaid's decision to three bet out of the small than Davies open. Yeah, definitely. You know that Davies could potentially have some raise folds off of that stack size. We see with his particular hand, of course, that he's planning to go with it. But all in. Call. All in. yeah, the all in comes through and Kincaid, of course, makes the call. But Let's not gloss over Mateos, who did not make a meal out of that ace-jack suited, let it right go. Right, definitely a function of Kincaid three-betting from the small time. blind again, giving Kincaid the respect three, for having, you know, the value range exactly. there to three-bet with. Did we lose camera three there? What happened? <laughs> Something seismic happened? An isolated event? Short pause as the drama builds and the ace king ends up binking top pair on a rainbow flop. Davies now better than nine to one from this point forward to haul in 7.8 plus as the all ins continue to fare well in the early going. Turn is clean and now anti sweating a 10. to hold, and he does. 3.75, I believe. Trust but verify. And if there was a tracker on those chips, you know Tilson would just be thinking, oh, so Davies has, has some of my chips now. Heath now with the box cars. Sends it into the muck, Maria. No open? Yeah, I think, again, uh, just a function of not sure if he's able to get post-flop 
with that open, probably expecting there to be some heat with it being Mateos's button here. And again, just trying to save those two, two and a half big blinds that he might open to if he's not sure that he's gonna be able to get post there. And I understand it. Seeing Kincaid open a 550 directly behind him and then Tilston move over the top will obviously leave him feeling quite a bit better about folding those two sixes. But ironically enough, they were in the lead against both of these holdings. And Kincaid has Tilston dominated. No. No, it is. I wouldn't bullshit you. To the flop we go. It is ace high. Kincaid looking very good. A lot of chop sweats today. <laughs> but you heard it. Heath wondering if there'll be a sweat to a chop, which there could still be. Yes, of course, 23% of the time. Queen of the Jack could pair. The King would not be good. That would give Kincaid Broadway, and so the eight on the river does seal Tilston's fate, going from second in chips coming in to now finishing in fifth. Pretty disappointing way to collect six hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars. Right, and a heat check here for Kincaid. Yeah, that was very good TV for the for us. Pocket nine. For us sitting at the table. Yeah, a nine busy in Mateos's hand, and you know Adrian will be looking to kind of lean on players with a multitude of different holdings in these Jack Nine suiteds, kind of rate to be in the hand class that he could do it with? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think that Mateos yeah. is going to fold. Oh. Not going to three bet either, though. And that does open the door for Davies to go crab hunting. I guess you fish crabs. You don't hunt them. <laughs> Unless they're land crabs. Then I've you're hunting them. I'm not sure there are land only crabs. I don't say land only. But once they come out of the ocean, we're not fishing them anymore, are we? We are hunting them. And Davies not going to do either as he sends his hand into the muck. Ben Heath in the big with Queen Jack off. Heath with 25 bigs to start the hand and just wondering what his best option will be here. Looks like call. Ten six four all diamonds and Heath has the only flush draw in this threesome. Kincaid staring at one over card but Barrels away, 550K. And with two overs in the Jack of Diamonds, Maria, do we fight on? Definitely think that that's enough hand to continue in some fashion. I think that a lot of the times you don't expect Kincaid to be betting this monotone board with hands that he can't continue with. Of course, if it was more the ace high variety, sure, it sounds like a pretty standard C bet, but with these middling cards in play, he ends up just calling. Pot up to 3.1 plus, courtesy of that call from Heath. Board pairs on the turn. Okay. And how uncomfortable is Kincaid going to be with two nines here? Yeah, I think I like a check back from Kincaid. He certainly has showdown value, could be up against just the naked flush draw. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He does check back, and a beautiful river for him, Medusa Hearts. Doesn't rate to change things at all. It really is a show within a show. This is a cash game. These people are going at it for real money. But then this sub layer of, and we get to know why.
Welcome back to continuing coverage of the 2021 World Series of Poker. It's event number 82, the $250,000 Super High Roller. Final table, where two have already fallen. And two are in the booth, yours truly and Maria Ho, bringing you this stratospheric podium finish. 1.3 million on deck, 2 million plus for second, and of course, 3.2 in the beautiful bracelet, going to our eventual champ. Five total places paid, that payout brought to you by Cuervo. There are no strangers, and there are no hiding places as we get down to three and two-handed action. A nice start to the 200, 400,000 level for Ben Heath. Shoots it up to eight and a quarter. King 10 for John Kincaid. Interesting dynamics at work here with the ICM implications, Maria. That big pay jump between third and second worth over $640,000. Or 630 and change, rather. You play around 10, right? Point four, I think. Thank you. Four to twenty five? Yes. Mateos comes up empty on the ace eight five board. Can't say the same for Heath, who has middle set. Yeah, and definitely the kind of texture you would expect the pre-flop aggressor to continue on. So for Heath, I think that there's not much additional information that Mateos would be able to glean about the strength of his hand should he just follow up with the standard continue here because that would be to Mateos' expectation. And luckily for Mateos, just doesn't have enough to continue. Every now and again, we see those king highs get interested on these ace high boards in case they're not up against an ace or better. Not on this occasion, however. Ben Heath, best of friends with Charlie Carroll, by the way, another accomplished young British professional. Moved in together and almost within a month of having met, play poker almost every day for over a year. Good to have another brilliant poker mind off of which to bounce your ideas and theories. Up we go, says A6. No thanks, mate, says Ben Heath. Some young blood here at this final table, including Mateos, who is the youngest of these three remaining players, already has himself three bracelets, the most decorated of the players that came to this final five. 35 caches at the World Series of Poker, and just tremendous results year after year after year. I don't think we're going to see a career change out of Mateos anytime soon, do you? <laughs> no, I think he's a lifer. Folds the button over to Ben Heath. We have seen Heath be somewhat oh. aggressive out of the small blind into Kincaid's big blind, but I think queen six, this particular combination off of that stack size is a good candidate to limp in with. Is that the diaper? <laughs> the deuce three off suit? Three. 
You know, it is indeed, and it's shooting it up, Maria. <laughs> I don't care how infamous the diaper is. I, I don't really see myself playing it very much just for that reason, but that's just me. 800 more. Queen six mm. starts to look a little less attractive. Nevertheless, Ben Heath going to hang in there, Maria. Doesn't want to set a precedent whereby Kincaid's going to be able to send him packing. Yeah, and the race size was small, so I think it just made it so that he is able to continue. Bottom pair as Kincaid's diaper outflops the queen high. Does not follow through with a bet. And Heath does not improve. And do you think on these particular board textures, as our opponents sort of narrow us down to a range after we raise from the big blind, we check back because it doesn't feel credible for us to fire and maybe we end up facing some resistance? Yeah, I mean, with Kincaid's exact hand, sometimes you will protect. But of course, you understand that Heath, when he does limp call a raise, Perhaps he's the one holding a lot of this middling value. Still no post-flop betting, and now Heath with just the queen high on this river. Yeah, and as played so far, I think it's natural for Heath to possibly put Kincaid on some type of ace-x holdings. So knowing that he's not going to win at showdown against that, might he try to turn this hand into a bluff? It does look like he's reaching for chips. That is million. See, the dirty diaper doesn't always come through, you know? Well, it did come through. It just didn't get ridden to victory like Kincaid should have done. <laughs> Can't blame him, though. Obviously, that board texture continued to deteriorate, and you're up against the great Ben Heath. Hailing from Brighton, as you look at his bio board, brought to you by the Global Poker Index and the Hendon Mob. So you're saying hate the way the player played that hand, but not the hand itself. Correct. <laughs> Don't hate the hand, hate the player which is not really how that normally goes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Chip leader will take a walk with the dustiest of all holdings in No Limit Hold'em, the seven deuce off suit. And we return to the country section of the music library and remind you that if you love poker, you gotta be subscribed to the Poker Go YouTube channel. We post daily clips all year round. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. You never miss any the action. I mean, we went deep country here. This is like some old classic harmonica in the back pocket, leather vest, grizzly face, white stubble, spurs and boots country. I did have time to check Twitter on the break and a few people saying to me, you know what, Maria, I'm, I'm not a fan of this music either, so don't, don't feel too bad. It's not for everyone, Ali. Well, it definitely isn't for me. I can tell you that. Eight. Raised to 800,000. Min raise open from the button. Mateo says 10 8 is dominated by Heath, who is mulling it over with Jack 10. Okay. Ops to take a pass. Kincaid has the right variety to defend with. Always got to like those suited. Connected combos against a min open from the big blind. Oh. 
Jason Cade, understandably, will defend the 10-7 suited, is pipped, but manages to flop middle pair on an ace-high board while Mateos flops the gut shot straight draw. Now this is a move you're not going to see very often is the lead into the pre-flop aggressor, especially on this ace high board. And that I think is just a little bit of that X factor that Kincaid brings, you know, the relative unknown to these players and to us in the booth as well. Five of diamonds on the turn. Now Mateos ends up with a two way straight draw. And if we're Kincaid, obviously we're always wary of that button open containing an ace. Especially after we got called on the flop. So he pumps the brakes and now opportunity perhaps for Mateos to begin to tell a tale with 3.4 million in the middle. Maybe target some of that 7x, 6x that is unimproved here. Yeah, and that's the tough part about taking a defensive stance with that lead on the flop as Kincaid with that holding right is what's your path to showdown look like? But for Mateos checking back on the turn and this ace pairing on the river, I think it makes Kincaid feel a little better about that prospect. Most definitely. And you see him reaching out and flinging a pancake out there. One million. Really no shot at a flat call for Mateos, so... The question becomes, do we bluff or not? And the answer, understandably, is no. And the Spaniard lets it go. Mateos Bucks you mind just obtained the yellows, like, round front, so by Kincaid, who has yeah, narrowed the gap between himself and the chip leader, a married man at the age of 42, a local. Talked about his crypto trading tendencies. Uh, okay. yeah, thanks. His last recorded cash comes a decade ago. Put him right here. So that's pretty much when your last recorded cash was as well, right, Ollie? I think. Do yeah, you but have, what's your hand in mob look like? I don't, I don't, I don't play tournaments. I think I'm like one for three. I've played three tournaments and I've I've cashed one. But I also think. a likely excuse when someone's Googling your hand in mob right now as well. It's a well-known fact. <laughs> I'm too busy talking about the greats to be a great, Maria. Oh, you got a real nice picture, though. Props to uh, Poker Go for the photo. It's the Keep the stallion <laughs> in the corral. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's your recent break desk look, it's the, Ollie. Uh, the count from Sesame Street <laughs> by Transylvania <laughs> Chic. King Nine decides to apply some pressure to King Four and King Cade. Checks out. Not willing to play it for one and a half total. Tournament summary brought to you by Solve for Y. 8.2 million collected. Davies finished in fourth place. Keith Tilston finished in fifth. That's mm -hmm. the other thing about these super high rollers. Yeah, yeah. The fields aren't huge. They're complete minefields. And only a handful of people are going to get paid. I feel like I want to buy into a 33-person event, and I want the top 30 to get paid. <laughs> Be like, yes, we made the money, guys. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the, that most of these players we see will not like that payout structure, Ali. <laughs> they do like ace-queen suited, though, and so do we. Mateos, right around where he started the final table, he did head northbound quite a bit, up and over 32 million, as I recall. Hey. Not sure what the exact high water mark was, but he is working his way back toward it, courtesy of hands like Ace Jack suited on the button. And Red Crab in the pot for Ben Heath. Ben with about 25 big blinds. All in. Piles it in there. 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of the times you're going to get a fold out of the button open. And so that would make it very profitable. And when you get called, you're usually flipping. So here we go. And Mateos, who had folded that exact ace jack suited in a different scenario earlier at this final table, does not hesitate to make the call here in this one and finds himself in a pure coin flip. Sick flip for all three of us. <laughs> Man, not wrong, well. Ben. Ten nine five. Things looking all right for the two threes, which jump out into the lead as you see the percentages swinging in Ben Heath's favor. But still two to come. The turn is clean, and now the diamond ace and diamond jack melt away from the top of your screen. Mateos with just four outs once in a 21.5 million chip pot. Will the threes hold? They will. And now, for the first time, Adrian Mateos has been dethroned as our chip leader. Should be 10-3-7-5. Correct. That Ten, honor belonging to Ben Heath. Came into the final table. Third in chips. Right. Now number one. Huh. This is a part of the music library I think we can get down with a little bit more. And getting up is Ben Heath all the way up to 21.5 million after collecting a nice chunk of Adrian Mateos' stack, who now is neck and neck with Johnny Kincaid. 1.37 million, the next payout. Are you at all surprised that Heath was willing to go with two threes there? No, I think as the shortest stack, it's certainly, you know, a great play to make, especially when you expect right, the button to be folding a bit of the time. There's only, you know, a very narrow range that they're able to call with, and it is gonna be fairly standard to take that spot. And he takes the button to a min-raise open as he begins to rally. Mateos, by the way, has been a frequent visitor to his rail, which you see back there. Spotters, large Spanish contingent, always comes out for the series and supporting one another. Adrian's gone over to inquire about a few hands on more than one occasion that were unshown after the delay, and the spotters oh. seeing it on stream, they're able to answer some questions, help him navigate yeah, the like remainder of the final table. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Keith now in the driver's seat as you see him There's raising this 9 3 offsuit up. Basically, the roles are reversed where Heath is able to take advantage of the fact that Mateos, pretty much being level with Kincaid, is not going to want to get into big pots out of position. Oh. Two sevens and a 10 produce an open ender for Mateos. Obviously, the 9-3 offsuit didn't exactly want to take a flop. Heath was just looking to apply pressure with the newfound lead. Now finds himself in position with just nine high and 2.8 million in the middle. Action check to him. That is 700,000. How much? Seven? Seven. Quarter pot. Yeah, a small continue that he would make with 
some of the ASEX type part of his range that he could possibly be raising from the big blind against the limp and feels pretty natural for him to continue in that fashion with this board texture and of course natural for Mateos to continue as well with that draw. Four on the turn and the nine high is unimproved. Same story for the nine eight however. Checks and the six slides in beautifully for Mateos, giving him the nut straight. No flush to worry about. And the pair out there doesn't rate to have produced a full house as played. Yeah, and this run out definitely more likely to hit Mateos's range, considering he limp called. So Heath, not much to look him up with anyways, but sh will he maybe take that nine of clubs and consider doing a little something sneaky? No. Would strike us both as somewhat reckless, but we have seen some pretty spectacular eruptions from time to time. Open raise on the button. Jack seven suited being mauled over by Ben Heath. Into the muck it goes. Now to Johnny Kincaid. He'll fold the happy meal. Why are you shaking your head, Maria? Uh, just because you looked over at me after you said the Happy Meal and you wanted me to have some type of reaction. I've just reached over and obtained Maria Ho's writing instrument for okay. this evening's proceedings, and it relax. It dawns was here already. The title: <laughs> Tuscany Suites and Casino. It was here. I'm using somebody else's writing instrument, mm. and what is wrong with the Tuscany? Didn't say anything was wrong with it, well, but I'm not sure I can say there's too much right <laughs> with it either. <laughs> I don't even know where it is. I think, is it on Flamingo? Is it off like Flamingo kind of by Laurie's yeah, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, on the east side? bear witness <laughs> to a poker player <laughs> attempting to pretend as we all know that she brought this pen from that her I room don't know at exactly the Tuscany, where the Tuscany that she is. doesn't know exactly. You have like 20 total, right? Real Hollywood what? there. You have 20 total? Or? Yeah, 16. 16. You can have your pen back. You have 20. <laughs> I have like 21. Raise and take it there for Ben Heath, who sits in fourth place behind his good friend Charlie Carroll on the all-time money list for English players. A big gap up to Sam Trickett in second, and of course, the almighty Stephen Chidwick. Right. One, million to one of the winningest off. to ever do it. Well, it looks like considering Heath is guaranteed a $1.37 million payout, he's going to pass his good friend Charlie Carroll on that list regardless. It also looks like we're going to have some blood in the street here potentially with Mateos looking down at two aces and Kincaid having opened a $1 million plus on the button with two nines. We know Johnny doesn't like to muck the good ones. 2.7. Raise 2.7. Yeah, especially for 30 bigs effective. Not much room to really get away from nines. You're not always going to expect Mateos to only have a value only three betting range necessarily in this spot. I 
I think you can count on Mateos to be a little tighter in this scenario just because Heath was behind him to act. Certainly, you know, if Mateos re-raised from, uh, from the big blind, that may contain a few more Rolling. loose Rolling. opens. Rolling. But yeah, you can't hate on Kincaid for making this play. Nope. Obviously, the snap call was always of concern for Kincaid, who did not want to see it. Sails in the short stack. 12 million plus, and that is not the look of a man who is altogether pleased pushing his chips forward, but he did manage to take an ace jack up against an ace queen and avoid elimination earlier against Keith Tilston. And really, that was the beginning of Tilston's demise, the fifth place finisher. Will he cheat death once more? No, sir. Top set for Adrian Mateos and running nines or running Broadway cards. The 10 8 also. The only paths to some draw live for Johnny Kincaid. Anything else, and he'll be drawing dead on the turn. Hope okay. for a chop. There will be no victory outright, but perhaps a rebate and some extended play as his rail looks on. No 10 on the end. Ace is full for Adrian Mateos. And he takes down a 24.8 million chip pot. And that's the most frustrated you'll ever see someone who is taking home $1.37 million. But Kincaid obviously had higher hopes for that situation there. He sheds his mic. Mateos will square off. A three to two chip lead going into it for Mateos. This is gonna be a bit of a treat here. Absolutely, it's two highly skilled players going to battle and they are pretty deep, effective stack size. 50 bigs for Heath. Mateos with 73 big blinds. Certainly could be long and drawn out and filled with a lot of high-level play. What part of the music library is it? This is electric guitar and it's fine. This guy's really shredding. It's kind of waking me up a little, you know? It's getting late here. Like, <laughs> if you close your eyes and imagine Mountain Dew as noise, that's what we're dealing with here. <laughs> I mean, I do have some glow sticks in my backpack. Maybe I should bust those out as well. Now, we all know glow sticks are reserved for EDM music. Yeah, but it also just feels like kind of the hype that we need. Let's turn off the lights. You know, Jeff always says dim the lights. Well, let's, let's dim them What's all the way. What's with that dim the lights let's thing with Jeff? Is that, is that some weird, creepy, romantic... <laughs> Thing I've never really <gasps> understood. Can you imagine Jeff, you know, with a lady friend at the end of the night being like, hey girl, dim the lights. <laughs> <laughs> raise, raise one million. The way you said that makes me so uncomfortable and I've made uh, a I long feel time. uncomfortable saying that. I think uh, it's we need to scrub hey that from the replay, the, oh. guys. Horrendous. <laughs> you play like 20? Yeah. Mateos looking for his bearings here before deciding how to approach King 5 off suit. Heath showing aggression Three early. Raise 3.8 million. And in turn being shown some by Mateos, who three bets it to 3.8 and message sent. Yeah, it's nice to take those King X type combos as a three bet bluff though, because you have a blocker in the King and it's one of those hands where if you get four bet, it's an easy fold, right? You're not turning some type of value hand there um, into a bluff by any means. You're, you just have one of those hands where you're happy to take the chips pre. And if you face any further aggression, you can make that easy fold. Call.
6-4 tray with a couple of clubs and a limp pot. Both players involved in this board. Heath with the open ender. Whereas Mateos with bottom pair in the gut shot. No betting and the an eight and an eight rolls off on the turn. 1.2 out there. Ten seconds. Check. Check. Still no betting. Now the board pairs on the end. Mateos with the best hand. Half pot for value from Mateos, hoping to perhaps get called by a high card on this paired board. Nine, ten, and jack high, really the only things that Heath is in front of and decides that's not enough of a range for him to call the 600,000. So another pot over to Mateos. Seeks his fourth World Series of Poker bracelet. Might he be able to reach over and grab it? One. Gonna have to get through Heath first. I feel like it's bad it's luck to touch one. it before it's mm -hmm. officially yours. It's a thick you know? needle. Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday I was playing without ten a couple hours. Over two million dollars already locked up by both of these players, courtesy of second place, and of course three point two six plus. We'll go to the victor. Ten seconds. Raise. Raise one million. Mateos with a whole lot of hand with this suited Broadway. Three point eight. Raise three point eight million. And again, Heath left folding after opening the button. It has been all Mateos here in the early going heads up. And you've been in the spot before, Maria. You know how much of a momentum game heads up can be. You can start to get into your own head a little bit at times, especially if you get shown winner after winner. Yeah, and there's no doubt that, you know, of course, Heath knows that Mateos is a very good player so doesn't expect this to be easy by any stretch and going to be looking to get one over on him sooner than later because you don't want Mateos right. to continue right. to chip away at you and to whittle away at your stack depth Mateos made it a million to skate from the button. Heath defends, ace, 10, six, rainbow. Heath with bottom pair up against top pair. Could yeah. prove costly. Yeah, certainly in heads up play, whenever That's you really get a piece of the flop, you feel pretty happy about that. Six hundred K the sizing from Mateos. And it's just that standard sizing that I think Heath is just going to anticipate that the chip leader is going to apply with virtually a hundred percent of his follow through range. Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely nowhere you can go with bottom pair in this scenario. And no information gained whatsoever with respect to where Mateos is at, which is so pesky. And we know Heath has some guts. We've seen some dig in earlier against Mateos in particular. Check. 
On the turn, both players check. Now a third over card to the six appears on the river. And why the check back with the ace from Mateos, Maria, on the turn? I mean, I think it's a combination, right? I think in, in some ways you are just keeping the pot somewhat small. But of course, by protecting that check back range, you're able to go for a pretty decent sizing on this river if you elect to go for the value and really get Heath to pay you off with a lot less than he normally would if you're firing three barrels. A lot of times this type of hand is not really going to be able to be taken as three barrels for value. You can't expect a lot of the times that you're able to bet, bet, bet and get called by worse. But now exactly you can take this large sizing on the river after checking back the turn and get Heath to potentially look you up with the sixes. And there's three occasions on which this exact sort of scenario has transpired on the end. The first of them, Mateos, bet full pot, got caught by Heath bluffing. The second, he went up to 150% pot. Heath ended up folding correctly. I'm sure he's gotten some update about what happened there. And now Mateos goes back to full pot. And I thought perhaps Heath might have his interest peaked, but he does let go of the six. Yeah, past hand histories, of course, will play a factor to a certain extent, but of course, this type of board, a lot different than on that fives board when Heath had ace three. There's just a lot more hands that I think Mateos will have for value versus in that scenario, so that is why Heath decided to make a good fold. Jack four, sub premium part of the deck. This time Heath limps and looks up with almost sort of a, a pleading eye to Mateos to go easy on him here. No such luck. Yeah, but he definitely at that stack depth where he should be incorporating some limps, of course, but sometimes Mateos is going to take advantage of that, knowing that part of your limping range, of course, will be weak. Well, a shout out to everybody who is watching our free preview stream on YouTube. Show us a little bit of love. Hit the like button. Show us even more love, though. Become a subscriber to Poker Go. Sign up for notifications and then drop a little coin down for unlimited access to our content. Use the promo code 250K and shave 20 bucks off of an annual sub fee. And I promise you guys that money does not go directly into the Ali Najad candy fund, so don't worry. Well, not entirely. <laughs> but insofar as I don't pay for all of this candy that is always in a bowl ready for my consumption anytime we come into the booth, understand that business daddy is footing the bill. The man does have an extra, Three. extra large mixing bowl one, one point of nine. fun size candy. <laughs> that I believe you've dipped into. No, actually I haven't. And but there's a reason why it's a lot further away from me and a lot closer to you, Ali. You, you didn't touch my candy? You don't let people touch your candy. I've seen the sign before. It says candies for talent only, but really it, it's meant to say candy is for Ali only. You can have a Milky Way. I don't like these. Here, take that. <laughs> What else we got? Yeah, these milk. Who eats Milky Way? Honestly, out there on Twitter, just. I feel like if, as a child, I should have thrown this back through the doorway anytime, put it in my bag. Anytime anybody did that. Just be like, Milky Way? Really, dude? In this zip code? Did your parents used to drive you to the fancy neighborhoods to trick or treat? Actually. Guys, don't feel sorry for me. This you is lived not in meant the fancy to be a pity party. No, no, no. No, my parents oh. didn't take me trick or treating, actually, Ali. Okay, that was not a thing in our household. I got to go with a neighbor once, uh, but the neighbor's parents took me and I was a ghost with a sheet over my head. Any other questions? 
You sad, deprived <laughs> child. Grace. Grace. Exactly. 1.4 million. Did but the abuse stop there? <laughs> you were a ghost. Because obviously if your parents saw you, they would have realized the look of disappointment every October 31st. Call me Casper. Well, nothing invisible about Mateos, who has made his presence felt yet again here. With a raise to 1.4 million, and it has just been oh. a bludgeoning sort of for Ben Heath here. Still has himself 38 bigs, though. Plenty of depth to the stack, and still early here in this heads-up battle. Mm. But it has been all Mateos. King 8-5. The story continues. Top pair against the open-ender. Yeah, pretty interesting flop for both. And again, this is just another similar texture that, that you would expect done. Mateos to fire as the pre-flop aggressor, whether he's connected with it or not. And so for Heath, definitely feeling like quite a bit of equity. Quarter pot sizing does invite a little bit of Ben Heath check raise, but keeps it clean with a flat. Trip kings now for Mateos. Take a six or a seven off the board. Yeah, fully aware of all of the straight combos and flush draw combos that are possible you know not just the seven six but sometimes the nine seven of course finds the continue as well and the gut shot type of straights and so even with trips does elect to protect and get some value 2.6 the sizing now into 4.8 for mateos I mentioned take a six or a seven off the board as though either of those would have been good against top pair. It's really the four or the nine only that Ben Heath seeks, and he continues to seek. On this turn, ace rolls off, and Heath in position. His willingness to call the turn suggests to you, Maria, that unimproved, if given the opportunity, he may get after this pot with no showdown value? Yeah, and when you look at the stack to pot ratio, of course, you know, just slightly over pot, I think there's a lot of avenues that Heath could have pursued, but of course here, Mateo's just gonna ah, put nowhere to go. it all in the middle. And now Heath down to under 11 million. 26 bigs though. Plenty to navigate, but not nearly as comfortable as the almost 40 million in front of Mateos. 78% of the chips in play. What's happening out hey, there in the chat? Yeah. You know, they're keeping it classy. They're being nice. And they're also saying that uh, Mateos is slightly being hit by the deck in some of these hands, but again, Mateo's also creating plenty of opportunities oh. for himself as well, getting aggressive with some less than premiums. Got a lot of people rooting for Mateo's, though. That is the real long and short of that. Are there Spanish IP addresses attached <laughs> to those screen names? Can we investigate? Raise. Raise. 1.4 million. Well, Heath now trying to get something going as he raises to 1.4 from the big. That's been Mateos's trick. Call. But unlike when Adrian puts the raise in and the button folds, he stays sticky with the queen 10. Does not connect on the 5-6-7 rainbow flop. Different story for Heath, who has bottom pair of gutty backdoor diamonds. Okay. 
that's one million. Mateo's just trying to get Heath to fold perhaps some of that ace x, king x part of his range that he could have raised with, but this is why it's nice sometimes to oh. have these type of lower suited hands in your open range because you have some board coverage. Um, but uh, Oh my goodness. E. Heath checking, calling the one million and queen high turns into top pair. And a 5.2 million chip pot. I mean, if the chat felt like Mateos was getting hit by the deck before, they're certainly going to feel that way now. Ten seconds. Two point eight. That's two point eight million. A little north of fifty percent the sizing from Mateos, but it is a decent chunk of Heath's remaining seven point nine, Maria. Yeah, and Heath, of course, was hoping to turn a little bit more equity because obviously this bottom pair is going to be hard to get to showdown with. Call. He will find out whether or not that showdown will come cheap as he makes a call, bringing the pot to 10.8 million, and he is unimproved on the river. Yeah, and just half pot back for Heath. The eight X's and the four X's, of course, missing with this river. Love Mateos' table presence, by the way, Maria. Just strictly business. Doesn't really give anything off. Heath just with a pure bluff catcher and you know Mateos started this hand with just a call from the button and it was Heath who raised it up. So Heath really trying to consider what type of hands Queen. Mateos would oh be doing goodness. this with and he does call. It's over. Yeah. I'm off. Adrian Mateos has won his fourth oh. World Series of Poker bracelet. Said, yeah. And the 250k yeah. high roller, 3.26 million in change. I don't think either of us anticipated that Heath would just make that call right there. He's going to take home over 2 million, but wow. Just a pair of fives. The yeah. Five, six, seven, queen, do sport. I mean, again, you know, all the straight draws bricked off, and I think he just felt that, you know, Adrian wouldn't take that line unless he perhaps had a two pair type combination from the flop or you know he's not going to give yeah, him a lot of ball. turned queen x's necessarily <laughs> when mateos bets that flop so for Heath, know. you know felt like the right call to make <laughs> but not you heard daniel negranu on the rail asking adrian mateos what's he going to do with all that money <laughs> well listen that's money added to already almost 22 million in career tournament earnings fourth bracelet and if there was any doubt or any question as to whether or not we've got a lifer on our hands let the doubts be vanquished Adrian Mateos has earned every right to be considered one of the best to do it and for Ben Heath perhaps not the best night of rest he's ever going to get yeah, Mateos is just a beast, though, and I think a lot of the times when you play against someone that will have quite a few bluff combos there and be willing to go for it, you can't just be folding all your bluff catchers, but in that scenario, Mateos just ended up having it. And it's he, really a $1.25 million call, Maria, and in terms of cash, that's got to be among the bigger pots that these two guys will play throughout the course of their careers. And we send it down to our Jeff Platt, who is at the final table. Well, Adrian, the biggest win of your career from a financial 
yeah. perspective. But where does it rank on the list of your career accomplishments, would you say? Like in the last year, I, will be play I was playing all the 100Ks and the mm -hmm. big binds, and I don't have a big win like that. I won many 25K, 50Ks, but I want to win a really big one. And that one it is for sure, and I was, it's one of my goals, and I was, I'm very happy. You now have four World Series of Poker bracelets. What does it mean to you to have that kind of success at this series? It means a lot, especially for me it's pretty difficult because I only play No Limit Holden, so it's, it's really difficult. But yeah, I, I just love to, to win a bracelet, collect, I, try, I will try to collect all of them, but <laughs> it's hard, so but yeah, I'm pretty happy. Okay, now comes the fun part. It is my honor to present you with your fourth World Series of Poker bracelet. There you go. Thank you. Congratulations. Hold it up to the camera. Adrian Mateos, your super high roller champion. <laughs>